Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Actions of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well, uh, a little tired. Uh, we were just finishing up uh, trading Tesla in the webinar after hours. Um, all right, we'll get to Tesla in a second. Uh, we talked about it last night uh, on the video. Again, you always need to be uh, kind of uh, prepared on both sides of the market. I think it's very, very uh, true in today's case. If you look at the final numbers, Dow down, uh, 400 points, NASDAQ down uh, 300 points or 1.6%. And you have uh, the S&P 500 uh, down uh, a little bit less than 1% of the move. Uh, key metric here is, uh, if you guys remember the video from a couple of nights ago, two, three nights ago, we talked about uh, this 491 area. You guys remember that 491 area it stopped a couple of times. It lost that 491 area. That's where the selling uh, really started escalating today. Uh, the first move was perfect. Uh, was absolutely perfect uh, to this uh, 489 60s level, and then it lost the 20 day moving average at 487 and touched 485 perfectly. And again, it, it, it's not really a scenario of you know what was the news. Uh, it, again, I keep on reiterating this, especially to newer traders. When you have a market that is hot as this market is, you really don't need news. You just don't. It's called gravity. The same way. Uh, a stock doesn't need any news to go up 15 days in a row or a 25% move. And the market doesn't need to have any news uh, to the downside. Again, sometimes gravity is real. And when we talk about this all the time, that uh, there is uh, no such thing as a great market that goes straight up. You're going to have very, very aggressive intervals. They do pull. And they did exactly today. And when you find yourself in the trading world, right? Not the investing world, but the trading world, it's really giving you some really good opportunities. So, you know, in Q's, you know, beautiful move today. Congratulations to the way you guys caught the Q's. Uh, we talked about AMD last night, right? We talked about AMD last night and losing the 50 day moving average. Uh, gave a trade as well. Uh, SMCI didn't quite crack, uh, didn't quite crack, but, uh, you know, not a bad move as well. So you have a lot of names, you know, losing, uh, altitude, even Nvidia, right? Again, it's not a Teflon. Uh, type of market that you know everything uh, under the sun is going to is going to work and is going to go linear. You know, here is a perfect example of it losing the previous day's low and stretched, uh, and it got you know pretty pretty hit today. You know, pretty decent move today uh, from the five all the way down to uh, the ten day moving average where you see the bounces. And now, if you're planning your day, right? If you're planning your day where you're planning uh, the rest of the week and you're looking for you know, a downside more potential on video. Again, I don't know if it's going to come or it's not going to come. But the point is, if you're looking for any more uh, downside potential, well, you have to start looking at the you know 10-day moving average, right? The 10-day moving average uh, was the last three bounces. You can see it bounced on 10.15. It bounced on uh, it bounced on 10.16 and it bounced today. So if there is going to be more selling, and again, I don't know if it will, but again, we're just trying to prepare everybody for every aspect of what the market has in stall, if there is going to be more selling in the market, well, then NVIDIA, again, below the 10-day moving averages, we've given so many examples over and over and over again, well, that has to be defended because if not, well, then there's more selling to come. E even a name like Meta today, which was very, very odd, and the reason why I say that, uh, when the market was down like 150, 200 points, we were watching, they were coming for, no joke, they were coming for, the 92, the 592 50 weeklies today, $15 out of the money, 15 bucks out of the money with what, two and a half days of worth of expiration. And this is kind of where we talk about the options market. Yes, they're bidding. You know, does somebody know something? That's always kind of the, the whole point. Does somebody knows something, is somebody just guessing, but they were betting and betting and betting, just like we saw uh, last week on SMCI when they were betting the 52, 53, 54s. The stock got absolutely hammered. And that's exactly what happened today on, on Meta. Meta lost this whole uh, two-week range today and stopped right at uh, the rising support of the 34-day EMA. So again, if there is a reference point, right? Let's just say there's a reference point in the Q's lose today's channel and the video loses today's channel. You know, no, you know, no look further than Meta. If it starts losing today's channel as well, it's going to get hit as well. So again, 
to, to be a trader and to be an investor are two different things. You like a stock, you like a company, you love the story, you like the growth, you like everything about it. You turn around and say, I want to be long the stock for the next five, 10 years. That's fantastic. But if you are a trader, your job is to find opportunity. Your job is to trade both sides of the market. Uh, your job is to be disciplined enough that you realize that there is going to be opportunity on both sides. You don't need to put yourself in a corner and hope to God that one side of the market hits because everything is not, you know, is not contingent upon something else. Everything is trading on its own merits. And when the market gets heavy and there is a buyer strike, and again, I'm not saying phase the top and this, that, the other thing. It's silly for me, you know, and any professional trader with no way in hell ever, you know, uh, spill those words. But the point is, if you are looking for points of references, a day like this is going to give you very, very clean, clean lines if there are more selling. So if there is more selling. So um, let's talk about the afternoon, right? Let's talk about the afternoon. Um, you know, we have a lot of stuff going on, right? A lot of stuff going on today uh, as far as earnings. Obviously, let's start off with Tesla, right? Let's start off with Tesla. So Mr. Tesla, let's see what we got here. And again, I'm going to read off the headlines because believe me, I didn't memorize uh, exactly what had going on this day as far as earnings. So it looks like uh, it looks like uh, they're announcing a new vehicle, right? A more affordable, uh, I guess, Model Two, right? Model Two is coming early in 2025. Why that's important? If you guys remember, what started the sell-off in the first place was Elon Musk and the Robo Taxi Ban saying, "Ah, everybody knows my timelines." are way too ambitious. Well, at least he gave a timeline for this new launch of an affordable Model 2. Uh, that obviously got uh, the crowd a little bit hype as far as buying the stock. And if you look at the stock, what it's done since the robo event, as we've been talking about for like the last two and a half weeks, it's done absolutely nothing. So any type of good news would really resuscitate the stock. As far as everything else, as far as uh, its internals, you have third quarter gross margin, uh, 19.8% versus a 16.8% uh, estimate. You had third quarter adjusted EPS of 72 cents versus 60 cents. Uh, that was a beat. The only thing that was a miss was the revenue uh, number, but obviously a new model, right? A new model in a in an orderly time frame is is obviously getting the market uh, very very at least excited, at least rejuvenated. And you can see here. Uh, after the close, the stock took out a lot of levels. If you've been watching this broadcast, you knew how important that 225 level was. Uh, that was the initial pivot to the upside. Uh, you know, the stock jammed all the way up to this 235 level after hours right now, as you can see by the screen. It's roughly around the 232.50s level. Why is that important? There was a lot on this last run up, they're trying to clean up a seller here at 233. I mean, there's a massive, massive seller here at 233. I don't know what time you guys are going to uh, see this video, but if they can clean up that 233 seller, you know, you could see the highs, right? You could see uh, after hours highs and maybe it stretches out uh, all the way up to 237, but there is a really big, massive reload seller here uh, at 233. Uh, you had other names uh, reporting today uh, after the close. Let's see what we got here. You got uh, LRCX, pretty decent quarter, right? Pretty decent quarter here. Uh, LRCX, um, LRCX, pretty decent quarter, up 5%. Uh, earnings beat, strong guidance. You got TMUS, right? You got TMUS uh, up 3% of beat and raise. Uh, you got IBM. That's the only hickey of the market. Uh, IBM uh, down about 3% revenue miss. But let's see how the market reacts to that uh, towards uh, the overnight session, towards the open. Um, obviously, if there is going to be a relief, I don't want to use the word relief rally of today's selling, but if there's going to be a dead cat bounce, the one thing that I am noticing uh, overnight on you know on pretty good earnings on, on Tesla's there's not a lot of names that are reacting after hours. That's something we want to pay attention to in the morning because if Meta doesn't rally, if AMD doesn't rally and they start confirming today's prices, well, you can have a pretty good washout. Again, there's nothing to do with Tesla, but it's just sometimes you have to see how stocks react on other tech names, right? On other tech names news. So if you have LRCX, uh, you know, trying to pull up some of the other, uh, trying to pull up some of the other, um, 
uh, tech names after hours, but if they aren't able to, right? And that's the key. If they aren't able to, then we're going to have a little bit more selling uh, coming up. So I'm obviously uh, waiting uh, for tomorrow. I'm definitely prepared on both sides of the market, but I'm very, very curious to see if they do give up a day two, a day two lineup of potential more selling, obviously meta below today's channel, obviously AMD uh, below today's channel, right? Very, very important. Uh, SMCI uh, below today's channel. You can see how tight this is. It's holding on to, uh, you know, it's holding on to uh, daily support. Uh, we saw some 41s, uh, some 42 and 41 weekly puts uh, coming into this name. One other thing that, uh, one other thing you kind of saw the clues today kind of play out here. Uh, Microsoft, we had a runner overnight. It got upgraded today by Cleveland, Cle uh, Cleveland, Cleveland Research. I uh, was up to like 31 and a half of five pre market, and then they sold it off. So you really kind of saw uh, the air coming out of the bull case, at least for today. But the most important part, guys, like I say every single day, trade every single day based on the next day's merits, based on tonight's research. Again, I'm not in the business of guessing what I think is going to happen tomorrow. Here's my data. I watch the options market to see if they could confirm today's data tomorrow. And I sit there patiently waiting for these channels uh, to confirm. Tomorrow should be obviously interesting with Tesla. Uh, let's see if the stock can go absolutely nuclear right now. The stock is up roughly 9%. Uh, after hours, or oh, who knows? Maybe they, you know, the sellers come, you know, come correct. And Elon says he's a satanic worshiper, and um, you know, he likes uh, having sex with mules. I don't know. He maybe kills the stock after the conference call. But the point is, have a plan. Have a plan. Stick to that plan. Don't guess. Don't anticipate. And let things confirm, guys. God bless everybody. Have a great night, and I will see you all tomorrow.